I feel very privileged to be asked to join you this morning to speak about this very important issue for Africa. Africa is at a critical juncture. And um, briefly, I will talk to us all about what Africa has been doing. We have said doing quite a lot. What we've been doing at regional, national level in terms of addressing cyber threats, the responses, the approach, and of course, discuss best practices, even from the region. So um, it is important to highlight firstly that Africa has started exploring an agenda on digital transformation. And that was in 2020, um, the African Union um, established the African Union Digital Transformation Strategy. And that is for 2020 to 2030. Importantly, um, following the endorsement um, of a declaration, that strategy has cybersecurity as one of the cross-cutting theme, making cybersecurity a very important um, factor in Africa's digital transformation agenda. And if you look at that uh, digital transformation strategy, it has highlighted the need for greater capacity to detect and mitigate cyber attacks. So following from Nate's presentation, Africa is actually very conscious of the issues of cyber threats, and it is underscored in the digital transformation strategy. And one of the key things that has been highlighted in relation to cybersecurity under the digital transformation strategy is the need for collaborative ICT regulatory measures, that ICT measures must be collaborative. However, there are many challenges and factors um, when you think about the sort of cyber threats that are evolving, if we think about Nate's presentation. There are so many factors that need to be taken into consideration when we assess the capability of the security sector in an African context. Basically, is in three approaches, the legal, the technical, and the organizational approaches to um, scrubbing cyber threat in the region. Now, it is important for the security sector to understand that we cannot address cyber enabled crimes or cyber threats in the same way we address traditional threats. Now, because of the nature of cyberspace, there are so many factors that have to be taken into consideration in understanding that security would not only be focused in terms of the security sector when it comes to cyberspace. And therefore, it is important to establish good cybersecurity policies and processes, and to also adopt standards and solutions that would improve the ability and capability to mitigate cyber threats. The first one I would look at is the legal responses. Where are we as a continent? What have we done in terms of policies and what is also happening globally that African countries have been involved in? Now, in terms of legal responses, it is very important that we as Africans, we have substantive and procedural laws that are harmonized in terms of regional and international standards. We have to strengthen the laws. We have to strengthen the regulations. We are having laws in Africa, legislation nationally. But sometimes when you look at the legislation, you find that in terms of the response level for where we are with the emergence of AI, blockchain, most of the cybersecurity legislation will need revisions. So we need to improve the legal framework. Now, the African Union Cybersecurity and Personal Data Protection Convention, the Convention on Cybersecurity and Personal Data Protection, the Malabo Convention was drafted in 2014. It came into force in 2014. Recently, we have received the 15th ratification from Mauritania, and we are waiting for due process for it to come into force. It has been nine years. Um, of urging African countries to ratify the Malabo Convention so that we can have a regional convention on cybersecurity. Now, we are hoping that more countries can ratify the Malabo and then it will go into full implementation for the benefit of the region. Now, why is the Malabo Convention important? It is considered by the African Union Commission as a strategy to create a uniform system of cyber governance, to allow a unified regulatory approach between the African Union member states and to promote cyber resilience in the region. It required 15 ratifications for it to come into force. And like I said, we have received the 15 ratification for it to now come into force. The other aspect I wanted to talk about before I go to the international ones is the Lome Declaration. Last year, the government of Togo, in partnership with the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, hosted the first African 
Heads of State Cybersecurity Summit in Togo last year. It was in March. Impressively, there were over 6,000 attendees and 29 African countries signed the Lome Declaration on Cybersecurity and Cybercrime and made a commit commitment from last year to focus on cybercrime and cybersecurity in the region. Now, apart from the regional efforts that are going on, you also have the Council of Europe Convention on Cybercrime, the Budapest Convention. Unfortunately, we have only six African countries that have ratified the Budapest Convention, and Nigeria was the last country that ratified last year as well. Now, the benefit of international conventions is that they provide a platform for international cooperation, for states to um, take advantage of technical assistance and mutual legal assistance in terms of cybersecurity policies. We also have the UNGDE norms of responsible state behavior as far back as the resolution on the development in the field of information and, and telecommunications in the context of international security. The UN mandated the group to think about approaches to ensure cybersecurity at a global level. Now, interestingly, that process only had nine African countries as part of the process, but then they have developed the norms of responsible state behavior to focus on what states, particularly the security sector, can do in terms of curbing cybersecurity. Again, there is the open-ended working group, which came started in 2018. It's also a UN mandated working group, and it's looking at developments in the field of ICTs in the context of international security. Impressively, more African countries, civil society organizations have been part of the process. But the most important framework we are facing now is the UN Global Convention on Cybercrime. That process started in 2021, and the sixth session will be held in August of this year. Hopefully after that, we can have a global cybercrime convention. Now it is important I touch upon this convention because we have seen a huge involvement of African countries. In fact, there is an African group um, that shows a presence in every process of the UN ad hoc committee for the global cybercrime convention. And it is very impressive. Um, we have also seen the African Union also make a presence and submit um, recommendations on how the convention will look like. Now, it is important for the security sector to be involved because at the end of the day, the cybercrime convention will affect us or relate to us generally. The other response we've seen from Africa is a technical approach. African countries have been trying in this aspect, and we are seeing more African countries focusing on cybersecurity and capacity building and building capacity for policy, for strategy, even for a general cybersecurity culture in terms of infrastructure, in terms of skill and pursuing cooperation. We have also seen an effort to educate students even through provision of infrastructure. Now, Mauritius is one of the places where you can take away best practices from. Mauritius is often cited as a reference on the continent, Tanzania as well, in terms of the cybersecurity infrastructure, the National Cybersecurity Agency, the Computer Emergency Response Team, and various trainings and awareness. African states um, tend to approach cybersecurity from this sort of under-resourced place. And so it is important that we think of policies that will ensure that there is an increase in our technical abilities. It is also important that we enhance access to modern and effective cybersecurity technologies, the kind of infrastructure, the kind of technologies to improve our ability to detect and respond to cyber threats, just as Nate has pointed out. In terms of policies as well, we've seen many African countries focusing on computer emergency response teams. This has not been widespread. So far, there are just about 20 countries with national certificate emergency response teams or computer emergency response teams. We see, for example, Ghana. That is also an example of best practice. Ghana has moved not just from the national computer emergency response team, but also have sectoral computer emergency response team. So different sectors 
that affect critical infrastructure have their computer emergency response teams. It is important for us to also support the creation of regional and continental computer security incident response teams so that there can be that sort of collaboration between the security sector in terms of computer emergency response and other sectors. We must also develop comprehensive cybersecurity strategies. Nate has also touched upon this, so I won't go into it important and in deep sense. But then I want to say that one of the things we see with the strategy, and the strategy can be technical, you can also look at it from an organizational perspective. It is important that our strategies highlight the key challenges, the gaps, the opportunity, and how we want to address cyber threats. When you look at so many of the cybersecurity strategies, you find that it is not clear as to how we want to address cyber threats from a resource, from a skill, from an infrastructure perspective. Again, the African Union is now working on a regional cybersecurity strategy, and the African Union Cybersecurity Experts Group is working to develop a regional strategy for everyone. Again, if you look at the Budapest Convention just as a reference, it insists that states must have a 24-7 cybersecurity response point a response point where at every point in time, it can facilitate mutual assistance across countries to share data, to share information, and for technical assistance. This has been challenging in the African region, but I also wanted to highlight that the ITU, the International Telecommunication Union, and the World Bank has been working with the security sector to see how we can develop 247 points of response across um, African. The other response we've seen is organizational. So apart from laws, because laws alone will not solve the issue of cyber threats, there have been technical approaches, but then organizational approaches. And this is where the Malabo Convention is very important for African states. Um, the first issue is institutional response. If we look at Article 27 of the Malabo Convention, the African Union advises African countries as a matter of policy to have the required institutions in place so that even though the security sector may take priority, it is important that there are institutions that are clear to allow for accountability, to allow for transparency. The Malabo Convention in Article 27 mandates that that institutional process will ensure accountability and clear transparent strategies on how we are approaching cyber threats. This is important because institutional capabilities allow for leadership. If the security sector can think of organizational approach in terms of having the right institutions, it would then allow for the right partnership. It transcends only the security sector, like I said, cybersecurity must be focused on the people as well. And so policy-driven ambitions must also meet technical activities in how we look at institutional perspectives. So, while we find um, the legal basis, the technical basis, let's have robust institutions that ensure roles and responsibility of cybersecurity institutions in a very perfect relationship with private sector and the security sector. And that way we can also ensure that uh, there is response, emergency response at the appropriate time. AFRIPOL is one institutional basis that has been working with the African Union Commission as well to see that there is effective response. An important part I want to touch upon is the security sector partnership. Now we see across Africa that there is a reluctance in the security sector to work with private entities. In Gambia, for example, it's interesting to see that in Gambia, the security sector is even working with civil society organizations. One of the civil society organizations in Gambia actually works with the security sector to raise awareness. In Ghana as well, you see that also replicated where there is a multi-stakeholder approach that benefits people. I think it is important more than ever to improve coordination between security-focused and technology-focused divisions. If we look at Article 26, again, of the Malabo Convention, it highlights the importance of fostering public-private partnerships. This will enhance our collective defense against cyber threats. It will improve information sharing. It will improve public-private uh, public partnership in a way that actually works. By the time we bring in civil society organizations, academia, the technical community, the tech companies, it will reduce a lot of the challenges we face because there would now be practical operational 
cooperation. The other thing in terms of our collaboration approach between the security sector is also a lack of transparency and accountability. And I think when the continent begins to share best practices amongst others, it would be vital for us to take advantage of the benefits from different in the region. And we would see effective and operational collaboration between different sectors. It is also important as a continent that we invest in awareness, education, and training. And I think this is where we are seeing a good progress amongst African states, um, Mauritius, Ghana, um, Gambia. Some of these countries are having what you call the monthly cybersecurity awareness month. Every year, there is an annual cybersecurity awareness month, and states are investing in awareness, education, and training in line with the Malabo Convention. Now, it is a critical component because cybersecurity is not just about national security. It is important. And like Nate highlighted, the threats that are coming to the region are huge. But we also need to think about our citizens beyond just national security so that in terms of policies, we can educate more citizens, train more citizens at the national and at the regional level, and even mandate the private sector to also provide awareness for citizens in that instance. The other important aspect is the national regulatory authorities. It is important that we decentralize policy making. I know a country that in Africa that is reviewing their Cybercrime Act right now, and it is the security sector that is reviewing the revision of the act, which for me, I find a bit problematic. We need to decentralize policy making. And if you look at Article 25 of the Malabo Convention, it talks about the national regulatory authorities. Now, we find that ministries can even undertake coordination of the national cybersecurity strategy. It is happening. If you look at the UN global cybercrime process, it is actually the Ministry of Justice from Nigeria that is spearheading the involvement. And it is impressive to see that sort of uh, practice. It is not just the security sector, but different ministries. For example, the Ministry of Justice um, in the, the Dutch, Dutch National Cyber Security Center is part of the Ministry of Safety and Justice. In Germany as well, the role of counterterrorism and security is played by the Federal Ministry of Economics and Technology. So it would be good to also see a decentralization amongst national regulatory authorities in Africa, also taking an approach and coordinating with the security sector. Thank you. So how do we then leverage security sector responses to advance cybersecurity in Africa? It is important that the security sector takes a lead role because of the issues um, that deal with cyber threats. However, if we look at Article 28 of the Malabo, it underscores as a primary issue international cooperation. Like I said, for example, if you look at the Budapest Convention, out of the 54 African countries, only six African countries have ratified the convention. There is nothing wrong with international cooperation. In fact, it will be beneficial to the region. And that is why we're having this sort of forum today in America, where it is enhancing that sort of collaborative approach, and this is to be applauded. Now, it says that state parties shall make use of existing means for international cooperation with a view to responding, cyber, responding to cyber threats. And this is very clear in the Malabo Convention, improving cybersecurity, stimulating dialogue between stakeholders. And it could be international, it could be regional, it could be based on private public partnership, it could be intergovernmental. Why is this necessary for the region? Because of capacity building and technical assistance. Three, about three sessions of the UN global cybercrime process has focused on capacity building and technical assistance. And a challenging area has been how it relates to Africa. If we look at the norm 13 of the rules of responsible state behavior, the norms of responsible state behavior, it also says that states need to cooperate to increase stability and security in relation to ICT practices. So whether regional collaboration, international collaboration, cooperation is very important because cybersecurity, cyber threats go beyond national borders. And this point was also highlighted by Nate. There are so many digital cooperation efforts that are going on in Africa, and we must talk about them. The US, for example, has been spearheading this through the US mission to the African Union. The US mission to the African Union has actually trained so many actors and keeps working to enhance um, cyber 
security capability in the region. We have also seen the EU making so much progress, the Council of Europe, the Global Forum on Cyber Expertise. In West Africa, there is the OQASI project, and this has been enhancing efforts. Interpol as well is really helping so many African countries. The only thing I want to add is that in terms of international cooperation, we must ensure that cooperation is taking place on Africa's terms. When we come to the cooperation table, it is important that we highlight the challenges that face the region, particularly from the security sector. And so that policies in relation to cooperation can be driven in a way that benefits the region so that we can identify our challenges, our gaps, and it will be beneficial to us at the end of the day. So we need to ask the question, in the midst of all this conversation, what role what are the role of actors in addressing cyber threats? Is cyber security only about national security? And I'll leave that as an answer for everyone to think about based on uh, my conversation with Nate and my own presentation. Is cyber security only about national security? Are there other factors that need to be taken into place? What are the role of actors in addressing cyber threats? Who are the main actors? Who are the main institutions involved in responding to cyber threats? Is there a role for other actors apart from the state actors? Of course, the state's main responsibility is to ensure the security of citizens and cyber security is also part of that. However, to effectively ensure cyber security, there is a need for a multi-stakeholder engagement. Civil society is important. Private sector is important. Criminal justice sector is important. Individuals are important. ICT sector, internet service providers, they are all important. And we must find a framework regionally to see that multi-stakeholder approach is enhanced. I know that Nate at the center has written a paper um, that focuses on Ghana's multi-stakeholder approach. Again, that is one good practice. I say this because if we over-militarize cybersecurity, if we make cybersecurity only about national security, it may be a challenge for the citizens. We must think about responses that transcend the national, the traditional notions of security. We must think about how we approach it beyond how we understand security traditionally. And that is why an effective cybersecurity approach should underscore the roles and responsibilities of the security sector on one hand, but also the relationship of the security sector with national, public, and private stakeholders in the general national cybersecurity landscape. Or else, a lack of such approach will continue to be an impediment because then we may not understand the tech companies in some of the cyber threats Nate has pointed out. We will not involve other sectors and there will be no clarity in terms of what we are addressing. Finally, I would say that it is inevitable that security actors should have a role, particularly when we think of ICTs. However, what you have is an issue that mandates us to think of other sectors. If we don't involve other sectors, what we've seen amongst African countries is that the security sector and the states begin to restrict and control the internet, shutting down the internet without a legal basis in a disproportionate manner, just because we think it's all about national security. So it is important that we think of initiatives. It is important to consider technical experts. For example, technical experts understand the internet and they are often cited by governments internationally when they develop cybersecurity policies. The private companies, the ISPs, the IT sectors are crucial because of their role in creating technologies and also because they profit from these platforms. If we don't think of collaboration, not just regulation, it could stifle the benefit of individuals and citizens in terms of human rights and how we deploy cybersecurity policies. Finally, civil society is very, very important. And I've seen it here in the Gambia, um, how civil society is creating a robust system between the security sector and raising awareness. Civil society is uniquely positioned to advocate for cybersecurity policies, especially based on a people-centered approach, especially based on a human rights approach. And they play an important role by monitoring and documenting what government is doing, what business practices are doing, identifying the knowledge gaps, providing analysis that can inform policies and relevant discussions between the security sector and the relevant sectors. They also help to develop knowledge and enhance dialogue between civil society decision-making and create better and more effective cybersecurity 
policies. So I'm hoping that um, going forward from here, we can take advantage and move beyond the responses um, that where we are and move ahead in terms of global best practices and take advantage of the skills and the expertise in the region in the different sectors. Thank you very much.